I, I was thinking that that we should do some reading of the of the law to give people. Sorry about that. Give people a, a sense of what it's like to read the cases and the regulations and and figure out um, what they mean. Uh, so I had something I wanted to read you about about all of that, but first I wanted to say another issue that's been coming up is who's the responsible district for child find and services if, let's say, a child is removed from public school and put in a private school? And the answer is that really depends, and we can talk about it some more, but I'm going to throw out a few examples. So under 34 CFR 300.131, if you live in one place and your child is going to private school in another, so let's say you live in Los Angeles, but your child is going to a private school in Burbank, question comes up when it's time for an assessment, who is the responsible district to do that assessment? And the answer is you can ask either your home district or the district where your child goes to private school to provide um, that evaluation. Uh, the district of residence is responsible, though, for providing FAPE, not the district where the child is in the private school. Um, but the, the private school, if it does an evaluation instead of the home district, can be responsible for funding an IEE. Um, people in private school have something called a services plan as well as an IEP. The services plan says how many or what type of services they're going to get from um, the public school district that their parents live in. And the answer to the question is uh, a service plan along with an IEP needs to be updated annually. So just because you're in private school doesn't mean you don't have an IEP, quite the contrary. Um, homeschool requirements, because I know some of the the families that listen to the show are doing homeschool. The federal requirements are at 34 CFR 300.130 through 44, and the the lead educational agency for evaluation and reevaluation for homeschool students is the District of Residence. So that's some stuff about private school students. That becomes a a thorny issue in certain circumstances, particularly with homeless children or foster kids that, that you know, don't have a, a stable residence. So with that said, Shannon, if you don't have questions, I was gonna proceed to read some of the law that we all deal with every day, unless we're out of time. We've got a, a little more than a minute. Do you wanna take a minute to read something? No, I'll save it for next week. Okay. I think that's better. I, f I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm it, all in it, it'll, it'll be more meaningful if it's okay. not. Uh, Let's take that minute then fragment. to talk again about uh, the, the Tolner. Is it Tolner and Associates? I'm never sure about no, this. No, it's stuff. Tolner Law Offices. Okay. And you can reach us on the website. And if you want to reach out to me, you can reach me at 310-245-1968. I'd love to hear from you. Okay. And, and that's it. And, and to just be specific, though, you're in the Southern California realm, and so you're, if people are needing help in Southern California, they would be calling you directly. If they need help in Northern California, they can call directly to the law firm, correct? They can. They can call me. They can call up north. It's up to them. There are some very fine lawyers in the San Jose office, and you're going to be meeting them soon. All right. Very excited right. about that. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us, Bonnie. Okay. Take care. Thank you, Shannon. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.